Hi everyone, welcome to the Will Bailey Fishing Show. I am going shore fishing, very excited. Um, it's first uh, little bit of shore fishing, beach fishing, sea fishing that I've done this summer. And I'm heading down to South Wales. So I'm uh, going to get down ASAP, probably take me about an hour. And uh, I'll see you guys down there. Well, made it on the rocks, loving life. Been down here about an hour. Um, down on the south coast of Wales, somewhere in between Cardiff and Swansea. Hoping to get me uh, little bass or a big bass if I can. Looks like I may have just had a nibble there. A little bit precarious down here on the rocks but uh, gonna live dangerously. Like I said, first bit of shore fishing I've done this summer, so glad to be out. It's pretty windy today, it's probably about 20 miles an hour. I'm fishing um, on pulley and a two hook flapper. blown away. Let's get a little bit of squid on me thinks. Actually got some mackerel and um, a bit of limpet actually on the other one, the flapper. So Ditch that bit of mackerel. This tide is coming in pretty damn fast. But I'm up a couple of meters. Oh, it's splashing at my, my heels. Blimey. Decided to come up onto the rocks because uh, there were quite a few people on the beach earlier, so I probably move off the, the rocks and onto the beach back onto the beach again. Oh no, always late losing my elastic. hoping the rain's going to hold out because on my way down here I've got a couple of uh, light showers it said that it's going to um, possibly rain shower like properly a little bit later on so we'll see I'm just going to leave that on there like that actually right Okay, let's get this one out. All right, well, it's getting a bit rough here, so I think I'm going to uh, head on up over on the beach there for a bit. Well, people, what an absolute stonker of an afternoon. My wife and kids are in the local city, shopping, doing whatever, visiting friends, and I had an opportunity to, uh, to come out 
on the South Welsh coast. And what a beautiful day it is. The waves are rolling, the wind is howling. Well, it's not too bad, but hopefully the fish will be biting. So thanks for joining me. And well, there's something on that left hand rod there. I'll go and have a look at that in a minute. I've relocated, I was up on the rocks, but uh, a bit more, bit, wind, bit more windy up there and the, the waves crashing in. Um, so a little bit more sheltered down here. I'm gonna get myself a, a, a brew in a minute. Nice little cup of tea. Maybe a packet of crisps. And hopefully it will catch us some fishies. So I got squid on one, here, yeah. and I'm going to put a sand eel on the other one. So best way to do it is through the eyes, pull it through. And down through the main body. Feed her down a bit, and through, and back comes the, uh, the line there, and we'll get a bit of, uh, bit of bait elastic on there. Find that around, plenty of elastic there. And you see the juice is coming out. That won't go anywhere once that's on. Unless some little fishy nips are off, which hopefully it will. Okay, that'll do. Okay, a, uh, this is a, um, a grip lead. I make my own at home. Scrap lead, bits of pipe, it's flashing I found. Well, I say found. Obviously uh, been given or have in possession of. And it's a good little uh, grip there. Five and a half ounces I think, or 150 grams. Get this one out. Okay, just sit and wait and hope for the best. If you're wondering, I have um, quite a lot of uh, Shakespeare gear. When I was about 10 years old, I was given uh, a fishing rod for Christmas by an old boy by the name of Dom lived in Coomartin, I was brought up, North Devon. And uh, I first went down there and saw him fishing and he, uh, he taught me the ropes, chatted to him for a bit and then I got myself a little five foot, six foot um, piddly little thing. Uh, taught me 
how to tie a blood knot, um, which is obviously the, one of the main knots to use. And yeah, I spent quite a lot of time with him down there on the uh, on the seawall. And um, remember, I'll never forget the time I caught my first fish. She was a, a sea bass, probably probably about a pound and a half in weight. It seemed huge at the time. It was uh, on that little rod. It was such a puny rod that Don literally had to uh, had to get. Um, he couldn't really, and the reel was so so tiny. He had to get the line around his arm and like pull it in. It was like a probably a 30 foot uh, drop down to the sea from the wall. If anyone's been to Coo Martin down by the alcoves, you'll probably know where I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, best fish I ever caught. Fantastic. Got me got me hooked. Excuse the pun. Um, he banged it on the head for me, and I took it home, and I had it for supper. And it was the best, probably to this day, the best fish I've ever eaten. Um, my dear mum cooked it for me with a few potatoes and vegetables, probably new potatoes, and it was absolutely delish. Loved it. So now it's nice to be out today. Gorgeous day. A little bit overcast. Um, Oh, is that a bite? Sometimes when it's too sunny, it's just like unbearable, you know, the heat. Um, so anyway, this is the first time I've been out fishing uh, this year, this summer, sorry. So it's, uh, it's like the middle of July now, so. It's fantastic, I'm, I'm loving it. It's just being by the ocean, I mean. I, I moved away when I was 16, around 16, and uh, moved up to uh, the home counties, which was great. I had, I had good fun at the time. Um, but yeah, I missed the, the main thing I missed was the, the ocean. So uh, being about an hour away from it is, from somewhere like this, is, is, is uh, no biggie, really. I mean, it's. In fact, I'm, I'm probably quite lucky uh, in some people's eyes, you know, who are obviously in the Midlands and far away from any. And Bristol Channel as well is um, one, one of the best places to fish in the UK. Maybe not so much nowadays. Fish stocks have, uh, have reduced quite substantially, less and less fish nowadays. But um, hopefully we'll get something today. Won't uh, go away with a blank, but even if I do, I'm not going to be completely gutted, you know, and devastated because just being here, it's, it's a joy, you know. Um, weather's kind of turning a little bit. There's uh, possibly a little bit of rain later on. Quite a bit breezy. I don't know if you can hear the, any howling or anything, but there's, there's a good 10 mile an hour wind coming in. And it's coming in shore as well, so... Um, Hopefully this little microphone I've got will work okay. I did just have it caught in the in the um, the tripod then just for a second, so uh, I might have broken it. Come on, fishies! I got to wheel the fish again. Wheel wheels the fish. Come on. The sand deal on there. Last time I was down in South Wales was obviously. Uh, before the lockdown. It was um, quite cold, I think, actually. It was like, it was not that cold, but it was it was quite chilly. Back in, I, I snuck a, a trip in, like, right before they locked down. And there was dozens and dozens of people on this beach that I went to, not far from here, actually. Absolutely dozens of them. And it was getting busier and busier and busier. I didn't catch anything, unfortunately, but the time before that, I went to the same place. Um, and I got a couple of nice little codling. So, and that, and that was on sand deal, frozen sand deal. So, it's, uh, it's always a good one. I'm going to have to move up the beach in a minute, I think. 
I think I'm alright just for the moment, but pretty rough out there, isn't it? Okay. Let me get the uh, the pulley in. Now I got one of these baiting needles. It's like one of these double double baiting needles. They're quite handy actually. I'm going to go for a uh, a cocktail of squid and mackerel. So we'll try that. And basically, you just have to thread one on on each, like so. Do like a kind of like as if you're threading a needle. Pull that down, and a bit of uh, bit of mackerel, like so. And then you just pull this up to the top. There's a little groove, a little. Um, little hook on the end of the uh, of the baiting needle and you basically just oh I'm gonna lose my thread again come on there he is so you basically just gotta like get this right wrapped up wrapped up really well tight and it'll be like a a little pod of, uh, of bait. And there's a hook there that's presented nicely. Keep going round. And that more. Scrag myself then. Okay, then what we do is we just turn that around, pull the baiting needles off, and you're left with a beautiful bait presented very nicely for a big fat bass, hopefully. So we'll get that one out. <coughs> and the pulley, pulley rig, basically it's a uh, You've got yourself a like a sliding bead and link. This is a imp, it's called, um, which basically you're you've got to tie a swivel on and then a, a bit of um, trace line and then you hook that onto this end. And what happens is, is that's shorter than this. Um, the trace, the bait trace is shorter than that so basically the, the, the sliding bead kind of is able to take it there and when the, uh, it hits the water, the, the, the gear flips open and releases your bait like that. It's quite handy, keeps it all streamlined, very nice. It's not much seaweed out, last time I came out it was an absolute nightmare, seaweed everywhere. But there's just a little bit of green, green stuff here at the moment, so we will uh, we'll get this one out and then uh, see what can become of it. It's about time to uh, to get the gear back up the beach a little bit, I think. So I'll see you in a bit. I need a wireless one. Too expensive though. If there's any sponsors out there that want to uh, get me to try out one of their new wireless uh, 
lavalier, whatever you call them, speakers, Rode, Boya, anyone like that, I will be more than happy to try it out for you and, uh, and give you a, a, an outstanding review, I'm sure. Anyway, it is definitely time for a fish. But before that, I need a cup of tea. I've been out here for a couple of hours. It's three o'clock now and uh, it's quieting down on the beach and I've come out of my shell a little bit. A little bit self-conscious at the mo uh, to be honest with you at the moment. I did bring my kettle with me, but the wind. I also, uh, oh, was that a bite? I also had um, a bit of forethought to actually just bring some boiling hot water in uh, one of my thermoses. So we'll get a tea bag in a uh, in a big cup and get me a cup of tea. Now I did bring myself some new potatoes and a bit of stewed steak for dinner. Hopefully I can have those new potatoes with a nice uh, fillet of bass. We'll see. Where's my tea bags? There they are. Keep, ooh, looks like a bite. Is that a bite? Waves are pretty big though. Pretty strong waves. Probably just the wave. But keep an eye on it. I'm chatting to you. Yeah, so high tide's about six. Um, about quarter past three now. Let's get this tea brewing. That's still nice and hot. Probably perfect for tea. Nice big cup because I haven't had a drink for a good couple of hours so Yeah, I've, uh, I've always been into photography. Believe it or not, my claim to fame is uh, that my, I think it's my great cousin, my second cousin, basically my dad's cousin, it's David Bailey. So uh, I was always quite impressed by that when I was a kid. My dad had a um, 35mm SLR, he bought himself um, quite a big thing that was at the time. Um, a big expense for him, and he uh, he, he, he loved it and uh, played with it, and you know took some nice photos uh, of us kids and everything. Um, so uh, yeah, when I was probably about 14, he um, gave it to me, and I read that. Um, Shinnan, I think it was. <laughs> it was, uh, I think it was probably uh, manufactured or a deal done with Dixons at the time. I think they're way long gone now, but a Shinnan 35 milliliter SLR, single lens reflex, um, proper camera, you know. A whole bunch of lenses in the pack, beautiful. Um, so he gave that to me and I, I, I was just over the moon. I was like, wow, he gave it to me. And so yeah, I read the uh, instruction, instruction manual back to front, inside out, like it was my Bible, you know. I, it was like I was religious, so I just read it and learned a lot. It taught you a lot, actually, in these, uh, in these, old, um, in these old manuals, you know, about depth of field and uh, how to adjust the exposure and the f-stop and the aperture and how that affects focus and you can make, you know, the focus longer and blah 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 so I, I was always into that and so I've, it's stuck with me really I've always loved photography and uh, having been able to do this so easily now I've just started to get into it and uh, videography never really dabbled with it before I it's, I suppose it's a little bit like video editing is a little bit like um, uh, music because I, I played bit of music back in the day I had the uh, guitar and I was in a band played, played the bass guitar um, I love that but you can 
you know, you could, it was back in the day, it was like four track mixes on with tapes, <laughs> cassette tapes. And uh, in a way, it's similar to that. You're layering video upon video or whatever and cutting it and paste editing it and adding transitions, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, similar in that sense. I've always quite liked it. Ooh, stay, stay there, T. Do not want that to go flying because I am parched. There we are, look. Nice big old cup of tea there. Beautiful. Cheers. Just need a big bite now. It's a big bass for that. One of those rods to double over. Quite a setting though, isn't it? I reckon maybe after about an hour it's going to start picking up a bit. Hopefully, I don't know. To be honest, I've uh, when he just got back into sea fishing from like a, a probably a 10 year break, give or take one or two or three times, count on one hand how many times I went fishing. Um, so yeah, uh, over the last couple of years I've um, got myself a little bit of new gear, haven't spent a huge amount. Like I said, a lot of, um, uh, not Shimano, Shakespeare kit. Two rods of Shakespeare. I bought one of them. I think the one on the right uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Yeah, probably a good few years ago now. Um, one on the left. Last year. Last year I got the uh, the rod stand, which is a, a big thing. Never had one as good as, as good as and as nice as that before. Really beautiful. I'm really enjoying that. Um, I mean, it's you know. It's what it is. It's extremely good value. It's cheap. It's unbelievably cheap for what you get, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, considering you can spend probably five, even ten times as much on equivalent gear if you're really into it or you want the best of the best, you know. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I don't know how it happened, but the one on the right, the older one, the, uh, the eye kind of semi kind of came out just got a bit of um, uh, two-part epoxy and glued it back in good as gold you know it's been fine since uh, since then it's never never budged maybe I I knocked it over in the wind if there's what, not sand or it's not if it's too windy this thing can go over you know I've had that had a couple of times um, so you've got to obviously either put rocks down to support it or um, I think there's a hook in the middle of the tripod there for you to uh, put some something heavy on. Um, so you've got to be careful of that. Um, had uh, Shakespeare reels. I've got a couple of Shakespeare reels that I've um, I've had, but I treated myself um, after watching a, a, a YouTube channel, Mark. Williams, I think his name is, Mark Williams, Sea Angling, um, had these two matching, matching set of two uh, fixed ball reels. I can't, to be honest with you, I think they're pen. Yeah, I was going to say, I couldn't quite remember the, what they are, but they're pens, um, like Surf Blaster 2s or something, I think. But they are just, you know, that was a little bit of an um, extravagance. Although, and I got a couple of the, the cases to go with it as well to keep them protected, but I'll look after them, you know. Even that, even so, they were they're still only like 80, 90 pounds each. 80 pounds, I think. I can't remember exactly again, but you know, hopefully they'll last me a decade, two decades. You know, I'm, I, I plan on keeping them. So. Yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, they will last. As long as you look, it's like a lot of stuff. Uh, um, the phone that I'm <laughs> recording this on is the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, you know. 
Um, I had the Note 4 before that, looked after it for years. I'll look after this for years. Hopefully it'll, it'll do me good. Um, but um, I think it was last, the, the Christmas before, I got a, a cup of tea spilt on it and it just killed it instantly. My Note 4. I love that phone. It's a great phone. Um, but it's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. So I got a new phone out of it and uh, got the Note 9 and it's just absolutely amazing, you know, I love it and you can do so much on it. It's like a, probably more powerful than my, um, my PC, you know. Um, but, as I was saying, yeah, so um, this, uh, this phone here is uh, it's waterproof. So if I spill a cup of tea on it, hopefully it'll be all right and I can just rinse it off. There's me worrying about, well not worrying, but being a little bit self-conscious about, um, you know, if I got anything to say to you guys. <laughs> it's like when I'm around certain people, my mum and dad included, um, you know, I can just gas, I'm a gas bag, I can just grab it on. A few knocks there. I'm gonna reel it in. Oh, it feels like rain. Go and check that out. cluster that was guys a bit like this uh, microphone lead sometimes feel a little dab of rain coming down starting to thicken the clouds a little bit well so much for hoping the the rain would hold out I've just been sat underneath a brolly for the last hour I wish I'd have bought my bigger brolly. Oh. So yeah, been here for uh, a good few hours now and not even a nibble, unfortunately. Um, high tide just about in 20 seconds, <laughs> around six anyway. Um, yeah, a little bit disappointing, but you know, expecting, uh, half expecting a blank really. Uh, I had high hopes for a, a fish or two, but I'm gonna probably uh, carry on for another hour or so and then pack it up. But uh, I've got the, the flapper on the right quite close in now, so maybe get a little bit of sport on that. And uh, I've just launched the uh, the pulley rig quite quite far out, so uh, bait's still good on that. Hopefully, um, still might get something. But the little flapper rig on the right, it's probably just the waves and a bit of uh, seaweed on it. There's a hell of a lot of weed, green um, kelp or something. But a uh, bit of a nightmare, but. Yeah, hopefully on the right-hand uh, rod, might get something little. Anyway, I'll let you know. Keep you updated.
day, I drew a blank. I feel a bit beaten and battered by the, uh, the weather. It's been a bit gruesome today, but uh, I should remember to check the weather for where I'm going, not where I am. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyway, got some bait in the water and I'm still totally chuffed to be out fishing um, and had to have the opportunity to get out. I mean, it was a uh, beautiful setting, being by the by the ocean, um, fantastic. So I loved it. Um, it happens, especially in, in recent years. It's uh, it's not so uh, great with the um, <coughs> with the depletion of the fish stocks. Um, but you know, we all like to eat fish, and we've got to catch it. So trawlers are out there obviously anyway thoroughly enjoyable trip and I hope you enjoyed it nice to see you I'm lost lost for words now <laughs> I have my the little blanks going on sometimes and then, you know I need to probably have some sort of uh, little prompter on the, on the, underneath the camera to tell me what to say but maybe I'll get there uh, get to that stage one day but yeah uh, you know I'm just vlogging keeping uh, keeping the um, the camera rolling I, I can edit this anyway so thanks for watching please subscribe and um, like it if you like it don't if you don't and um, Will Bailey Fishing Show see you next time